Hey guys, we're out here at FMS 2024. This year it's called Future Memory and Storage. We're in the WD booth and we set up a couple really cool demos to showcase the power of their OpenFlex Data24. We've got the Tornado demo from NVIDIA actually running live both here in the booth and WD's lab out in Colorado Springs. If you come in here, cool, take a look at all of the action we got going on. First up, we'll start with kind of the hero numbers here and what we managed to accomplish. So over the last few weeks, I've been working with WD's POC team back and forth in their lab in order to enable this demo. This uses NVIDIA Index, which is their data visualization software. And what we're looking at here is a simulation from a tornado that happened in Oklahoma back in 2011. We've got some big key numbers up here that is showing us the amount of bandwidth that we're pushing through the system right now using the OpenFlex 24. We're seeing a peak bandwidth around 86 to 90 gigabytes a second. Sometimes it'll peak up to 100 gigabytes a second. That's going through two H100s. What that enables is simulation to run in more real time and have better insight for scientists who need to use this type of data for more accurate weather modeling. So the key driver behind all this is the OpenFlex Data24. This we have running in the WD lab on that live demo of there. We've got 24 of the SN655 U.2 drives, and we've got them connected over the NVMe over fabric with the, our high-speed NICs in the back. All right, so to share a little bit more about what we've got going on with the OpenFlex to WD platforms as a whole, we brought in our friend Scott Hamilton from WD. Uh, Scott, uh, what, uh, what's up, man? How you been? Doing great. How about you? Pretty good. FMS has been crazy, but we got a cool demo going on over here. We have a very cool demo yeah. going on. And uh, we enabled it with the, uh, the OpenFlex. This is our stunt double. This is our data transporter. But uh, we got the OpenFlex over there. What can you? Uh, what do you want to tell us about? Super exciting. We're announcing the third generation of our OpenFlex, Gen 4 end to end, super high performant, and um, we're feeding these GPUs and. I think they can hardly keep up with us. So it's pretty exciting. Yeah, I mean, in our testing, and uh, we'll link to the paper again in the description, we're, we're out running the GPUs with the storage platform in this case. Uh, it's two H100s, that's nothing to bark at, but in most workloads, I don't think we're seeing like the levels of throughput that you know, like index will put through, right? Like that's max, just absolute worst case. But when we transition to some like ML or AI workloads, what are customers talking to you about? What are they looking for? What do they need that, you know, and, and how is this able to provide for it? You know, I think it depends. I think it depends on where the customers are on their AI journey. And that's one of the cool things about OpenFlex and our disaggregated storage story is we can take, very predictably, we can take different numbers of, of SSDs and feed the performance of different types of GPUs. So if you're starting out at the lower end, and just dipping your toe in the water on that AI journey, or if you're going, going into even bigger ones, the ability to share this accelerated storage and be able to take different pieces and pool it with other resources, different flavors of GPU, different types of compute, um, that's the whole idea about composable disaggregated. Yeah, and I think there's uh, the software component, right, that helps enable that? <laughs> We, we have an API, and then we have a lot of partners in the ecosystem okay. that provide different types of, of services above us, whether it be data protection, whether it be encryption, whether it be presentation layers. We're agnostic. We partner with a lot of different people depending on what our customers are looking to build. So the OpenFlex is kind of more like a flex, like a Lego brick, basically, That's for right. storage. Absolutely. And you can do whatever you need, whether it's direct NVMe, GPU direct, like we're showing off today. Or you could put what, like some sort of file server front end on it to manage block storage, right? That's right. Like you anything. could put a file layer on there. We have a lot of object storage partners that use a combination of both our HDD JBugs and our Flash JBugs. Well, yeah, we've got the Data 102 in right now as well in our lab. That's right. So that'll be, uh, stay tuned for that because that's going to be a fun one to, to horse around with. The other thing that we've introduced is our RapidFlex Interposer. So our OpenFlex Data24 inside the box is basically a PCIe-based architecture. Yeah. The RapidFlex Interposer works with other partners because we go to market with our RapidFlex technology as a fabric bridge device. It could be an ASIC, it could be a card, or it could be a vertically integrated solution like our Data24. And that's what these guys are right that's here, That's what right? this is too, right? This yeah. is the Interposer. 
do you sell this with only WD drives, or can you get this as a platform and plug whatever storage you need we in there? We promote WD drives, obviously. Right. But, you know, our customers, they want other alternatives for yeah. a variety of different reasons, so we support third-party drives as well. Okay. So it's a platform agnostic, just takes care of the NVMe to Ethernet. That's right. Okay. That's right. And then what happens what, when... For those who might not know, what happens when I plug a U.2 drive in here and now it's got Ethernet on it, what happens, what's coming out this side of it? Is it just like an IP address and I can talk to this drive or is there some translation layers? No, it's, it's actually plugging into an Ethernet switch. Okay. So it's basically SSD into an Ethernet port, if you will. That's cool. Makes it very, very scalable. Effectively, this is a one-to-one -one fabric bridge, right? Yeah. Ethernet to one device, NVMe device, versus in our Data24, it's an aggregation, if you will, because right. it's going through a PCIe architecture. Yeah, so different different use cases for each one, but exactly. ultimately, at the end of the day, getting to the same kind of solution of getting the storage on the network kind of in the data center infrastructure out there and exposed, right? Exactly. All right, well, tying this all together, it's been really cool kind of seeing this interposer and how that Ethernet all works. Let's uh, go back over and we'll see how it gets all tied back together in a real live demo with the H100s like we were referencing. Excellent. In order to help learn a little bit more about what's going inside this guy, I brought my friend Neil over. Neil, good to see you again, buddy. Good to see you as well, how are you doing? What do we got going on here? So yeah, Jordan, this is our latest generation, the OpenFlex uh, Data24 4200. It's a 2U chassis. Uh, designed to be a, a disaggregated storage JBOF using NVMe over fabric architecture. Okay. Um, 24 drives, like you said, so that gives us up to 384 terabytes of storage. Uh, and around the back, um, you can see here that we have a total available of uh, 1,200 gigabit Ethernet, and we can use either um, Rocky V2 or TCP, and that's entirely dependent on performance, latency, uh, cost, technology requirements, and so on. Okay, so what does it take to implement one of these in my data center if I want this kind of storage, right? Because we've got some cool stuff going on with the GPU server over there. How do I do that? Yeah, so basically we're looking at 100 gigabit uh, or 200 gigabit Ethernet. Okay, out of um, each one of these? Absolutely, so you need a, a fundamentally uh, a data center ready Ethernet network, and we'd be using, in this example with the demo, uh, NVMe over fabrics. And so we're going to have compatible ARNICs in that. Uh, compatible OS, of course, as well, and we need that uh, network to be configured for lot for, for lossless networking to give us uh, that highest throughput possible. Well, that presents an interesting thing because I can disaggregate my storage from my GPU training servers. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. So if I'm able to push on just two H100s, the 90 gigabytes a second. I can share training sets or... Yeah, as soon as you move away from an HCI model to a disaggregated model, you, you, you have a global pool of storage. And as long as you can uh, facilitate that storage to a given GPU, we, we have the ability to not only tier the number of hard drives to a given GPU, so that allows us to drive throughput to its maximum, but we also define on the fly uh, where that data has been pointed to, what GPUs, and that can be very much dependent on, on workloads, like particularly in a machine learning operations environment, for example. Okay, so for maybe some of the less technical viewers, it would be safe to think about this almost as like a NAS type device that's just really, really fast. I mean, fundamentally, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So there you go. There so go. if you're curious on the, the boil it all the way down, it's a really fast NAS with a lot of storage in it. Indeed. Okay. All right, so when we were coming up with ideas for this demo and we were looking at different options of ways to show throughput and, and, and apply it to the context of a GPU workload, we stumbled across the uh, in Index Tornado video. Absolutely. And we had some conversations back and forth about the best way to configure it and the best way to run it. So you said you had some H100s and some drives and that you could stick them together. What did we do? Yeah, absolutely. So we, we all know that the H100s are pretty thirsty from a throughput perspective. They're Gen 5 uh, cards, of course. And so what we have to understand is, is the whole architecture of uh, GPU Direct and how we are able to push uh, throughput to those drives, uh, sorry, to those GPUs. And so with the Data24, what we decided to do is essentially put those drives into banks of eight, and we would map those across all of the uh, front-end 100 gigabit Ethernet cables to their respective Connect X7s at the back end. Uh, with these Connect X7s, that gave us the ability to map three physical cables, in essence, if you like, three physical paths to each H100. And we found at that point, particularly with this demo, that was um, giving us uh, really up to about 90 gigabytes of throughput uh, per, per GPU. Uh, and with this given uh, indexing demo with the, with the Tornado, uh, we're actually running out of uh, GPU uh, processing capability. So there's still 
Uh, there's still room on the table, if you like, in terms of throughput out of the data 24. Um, when we see with this type of topology, we expect about 105 uh, gigabytes per second uh, available, and we see we're, we're using about 90 for this for this setup. Yeah, in our early testing we were going through, we did some GDSIO work on it with the lab team, uh, with Calvin and Joe back in the lab, and we were seeing well over, well not well over, over 100 easily with GDSIO That's on it. the two. And then because of the index requires, we actually are doing the video, the 3D rendering on the H100s, in the server, it has overhead for piping that out over the wire, over the web browser, overhead for the rendering. But when we were checking like NVIDIA SMI and stuff like that, we were seeing 90, 95, 98% utilization across both. The footprint might not be very big. I think we're roughly six terabytes of data on there, but the throughput is the important part in order to get the, the visualization going. Yeah, I mean, we were, we were cycling that six terabytes every 60 to 66 seconds, roughly. Yeah. Uh, depending on which point you time it from. So it's that sustained throughput that's so important to allow this, uh, this demo to run smoothly. Uh, the other thing that uh, I, I didn't mention just now, but you'll notice here that all those connections go through a single PLX switch, right. which allows us to, of course, to bypass the CPU when we're using uh, GPU Direct. Yeah, so in the context, for those playing along at home, in the context of what we're doing with this demo, uh, for anything related to GPU Direct, having the PCI switch available to do this on is the absolute key. When you do have to go through the CPU root complex and stuff, you can start taking hits at these levels of throughput. It doesn't necessarily affect one GPU maybe, but when we're talking about multiple GPUs and terabytes and terabytes of data going through, they just can't keep up as well. So when we put this whole thing together, the way it works is there's a bunch of little um, NVDV files, they're uh, nano vector database files that sit on the OpenFlex, and the GPUs are able to just directly go access the GPU direct. <laughs> See what I did there? <laughs> NVIDIA knew what they were doing with that naming, huh? Which brings us to an interesting point. GPU direct is what's enabling so much of this, so you're GPU direct compliant and certified? Uh, not yet, but we're expecting that fairly shortly. Okay. Yeah. So, soon, but obviously we're showing it working pretty darn well here. Yeah. Um, let's take a look at what happens if we get rid of GPU Direct out of this equation. Yes, do it. We do have our live demo here, and to prove to you that it's live, we'll go ahead and turn off GPU Direct storage, and you can see our bandwidth drops 15, 20 gigabytes a second. So what's happening now is we're in what's called default storage mode, where the OS itself is handling the uh, the throughput to the GPUs. So what's happening is we're getting bottlenecked between this PLX switch and the, the CPU, where the data is coming off the OpenFlex, it's overwhelming the uplink to the CPU, and then it's because it's going in and back out. So we're bi-directionally basically at a 30 gigabyte per second link, and then it's it's literally instantaneous as soon as you turn it back on, it pops right back up. So we brought another demo out here. We brought a live demo actually running here on the show floor. And this is kind of more of our traditional side, right? So limitations, specifically the amount of NVMe we can have. Uh, we got four of those same drives in here. They're connected at full speed. We're only able to get about 16, 17 gigabytes a second. It sits around 15, which is expected for those drives uh, and, and these GPUs. But it illustrates the limitations of what we see normally with GPU servers, where maybe there's four NVMe bays if you're lucky. Absolutely. So that's kind of what the OpenFlex helps answer that question, right? Is I can give that amount of storage to the same footprint that would normally be limited by this. And yeah, no, absolutely. The, um, so fundamentally, to, to drive GPUs, we have to have NVMe drives. Uh, and it's simply, on the whole, isn't enough in, in standalone uh, compute systems. And so if we disaggregate, uh, we can then get a better understanding, or at least get a better ratio, of the, the number of uh, NVMe drives it's going to take to, to saturate the throughput to a GPU. So we're, we're working that GPU hard. We're, we're getting a better return on investment. Uh, and that has to be paramount you know, yeah. for, for, for GPU utilization. And so it does go a bit further than that. If we understand the, the GPU and it's uh, what generation PCI has, for example, we get a, an understanding of its throughput capabilities. We then have flexibility on the number of drives that we could choose and, and the type of flash, fundamentally, we could choose. Uh, and we can extend that a little bit. If we look here at this GPU server, we can see that really only half of it's in use. Right. Uh, and this, uh, this NUMA node, if you like, on this side with its own dedicated PLX switch, I can have all of this infrastructure down here pointing through this switch, 
And what that gives me is flexibility of scale. So uh, I can start small, one, one GPU, uh, a certain number of drives, and then I can grow outside of lockstep, if you like, because I've disaggregated my compute and memory resources and, and fundamentally my storage resources here. Uh, and I can grow as required, as my understanding of AI models, inferencing and so on, uh, in this example. Uh, so if I need to add another server maybe, or just more GPUs yeah, fundamentally, the same server. So we have a, a disaggregated pool of storage that is globally available on that network. Um, and uh, it is a case of plugging more GPUs than is necessary, or plugging in more uh, OpenFlex Data 24s. Okay. So what happens if I start plugging in more of the Data 24s? Can I they just pull them together and just kind of keep smashing them together and fundamentally, and yeah. You know, with our with our management tools, we'll see them there. And it's a case of uh, ultimately deciding which uh, namespaces we're provisioning to to what CX7s, and there afterwards how we provision those to the H100s. All right, well, Neil, that was a lot of fun. We uh, got our 250 billion data points of Tornado at 12 attributes each under that. A lot of data, six terabytes a minute roughly going through. If you guys want to learn more about the OpenFlex Data24, check out the links in the description. We'll have a link to both our write-up on it and our independent testing and validation, as well as links to Western Digital's site where you can get in contact with them if you're interested in one of these units. That's all for now. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit that bell icon for notifications, and we'll see you later.